Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining our Insights webinar series. We host these uh, every couple weeks and hit topics that are relevant or emerging um, or just require more attention than others in our industry. Uh, my name is Jonathan Shivers. I'm the Chief Business Development Officer here at Care Optimize. Uh, one of the things I enjoy about my role is being to take feedback from, from clients and turn those into um, meaningful services and products, and we're going to walk through a couple of those today as it relates to our topic, which is quality management. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, gaps between your EHR and your health plan, which seems uh, to be a, a prevailing issue um, in a lot of the quality programs that we're tracking today. So before we get started, um, I am going to be answering questions um, by chat. So if you do have a question for me during the, the webinar or at the conclusion of the webinar, I'll give everyone some time at the end, uh, we'll, we can all stay on the line. Uh, I would like for you to use the lower right-hand chat window in your WebEx. Find my name, Jonathan Shivers, and you can message me directly if you have any questions, and I will uh, do my best to answer all of those at the conclusion of our time today. This should last us about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, so today we're going to walk through uh, a couple different areas. Uh, first, some of the issues and challenges and concerns that we're hearing from clients about quality programs, uh, regardless of what type of practice you are. Um, I know we I recognize a couple of our clients that are FQHCs on here, as well as a, a tribal health group, um, relates to, to, to any type of practice, really, that has any type of program to track. Um, I'll talk about our quality manager solution, um, how groups are using it today, and how that is eliminating the discrepancies between an EHR and a health plan care gap, as well as what the challenge is with those and why it is so important to make sure that those are aligned. Um, at the end of our discussion, I'm going to show you all our newest module, which is our predictive coding module that, just like it sounds, um, presents coding that has either been missed or undercoded um, for your patients. For those of you who aren't aware of Care Optimize, um, we are a nationwide consulting firm. Um, we are EHR and practice management system agnostic, um, so we cover the entire spectrum. Um, our clients range all across the country, and we serve everyone from FQHCs to single doc practices to, to national health systems. So we we have a wide variety of clients that we serve, and if it has anything to do with an EHR or a practice management system, um, that, is, that is up our alley. Um, uh, I noticed a couple clients on today, so thank you all for joining as well and, and for letting us to um, have the opportunity to continue to serve you. So I want to start and talk a little bit about physician burnout. Um, this is directly correlated to what we're going to talk about in a few moments. Um, if you jump online or you subscribe uh, to any, um, you know, medical magazines or periodicals, you, you, will, you will read, you can't help but see that physician burnout is continuing to rise. Um, one of the more recent studies we saw was over half of the physicians are, are exhibiting symptoms of burnout. Um, even in specialties that typically show lower amounts of physician burnout, those specialties are still showing almost 40% of physicians are saying, yeah, we're, we're starting to experience some of that burnout. So it, it is a, a serious issue that is, is continually growing. Um, the reason for that, it, it's not one single thing. Um, certainly increased bureaucracy, challenging patients, um, those, those are, are some commonalities that physicians will bring up. But some of the other ones that we've noticed um, and that we keep hearing about are things like, well, the Affordable Care Act has made it more difficult for me. Having to use an EHR is making it a lot tougher on me and my staff. Um, the quality measures that we have to track, this isn't why I got into medicine, it's taking too many clicks, it's too much time, I spend more time 
tracking and documenting for these qualities than I do seeing patients. Um, certainly, these are things that everyone on this call has heard. It shouldn't be a surprise. Um, some of the, the um, symptoms, symptoms that we see, and, and frankly, outcomes are, are listed below there as well. Um, and so we try to keep this in the back of our mind um, as we create tools like this, like our quality manager that you're about to see, as well as our predictive coding manager. Are these modules things that will help physicians you know, ease on the burnout, have to worry a little bit less and ease their burden and help their staff to move faster and more accurately? Um, so that really was, was the, I'd say, one of the major drivers behind the development as we kept hearing this from clients. Um, there was a whole litany of challenges that go along with quality reporting. Um, and I'm sure I've even left some off of this list, but some that we hear often is that um, there's measures, I've got multiple requirements, and it's just not possible for me to get all of these in real time, close to real time, or even a, a timeline that's, that's reasonable. Um, the pediatric immunization is a perfect example. You know, I've got two, I've got up until the age of two for these pediatric immunizations, and it's too difficult for me to track these in my current system. Um, of course, one we're going to speak about and look at a specific example is the data that's coming in from claims isn't showing in my EHR documentation, or I should say vice versa. The patient's overall health cannot be described simply in codes alone. Um, and so how do we make sure that the patient's overall health and everything that is embodied there is truly being adapted to whatever quality metrics you are trying to track? So these are a lot of the, the challenges that we've heard. The most common here um, are I've got too many programs and I can't do them all in one place. That was one of the major things we heard. There's data sources all over the place. I can't view these from one spot. My EHR cannot offer this to me. And the pop health solutions that we're looking at would require me to have additional staff, bring more folks on, have additional training, not to mention the cost. It's, you know, four months to implement. It goes on and on and on. All of these um, are, are legitimate, and we're going to address those. Um, the other piece I wanted to focus on, and, and hopefully this is something that resonates with everyone on this call, is the bottom line here, is that the gaps that are in my EHR are not matching the gaps that are in my health plan. Uh, no matter what your EHR tells you, that is not the source of truth for meeting your quality measures. That is all dictated by your health plan. So there needs to be a way that our clients can see where are they not matching. And that's what we have developed is a web-based quality module that will show you here are the specific gaps for each patient, for each provider, for each payer that do not match and where it is not, or I should say why it is not specifically matching. Okay, so I've, I've already really talked through this. The main things that our clients have asked for is how do we track this? How do we see code, you know, how do we look at code predictively um, and make sure that these gaps um, are one-to-one -one between our EHR and our health plan? So our quality manager that you're going to see, um, it is web-based. You can access it from anywhere. It also can integrate into your EHR. Um, so it, it can be accessed both ways. Um, the reports you'll see are automated. They can be emailed out. Um, they can be viewable from within the application based on the user's preferences. Uh, and the biggest piece here is your care gaps are identified immediately and that the customized measure builder will allow you to add any type of program that you wish to track. The data sources that we bring in is really the, the heart and, and, and the soul of this solution. 
Um, so we are not just using claims data and we are not just using EHR data. Those are the two most common, but we're bringing in payer data, we're bringing in your financials, um, any type of HIE information that's available. The, the secret sauce to this entire solution is that we are able to pull in nearly any type of data that is made available. That gives our folks the advantage to be able to take care of these gaps. So this quality manager, what you're going to see here are some of the programs that we're tracking for groups already. Um, MIPS, of course, is a huge one um, where you can track all of your measures, get real-time scores by each of your providers, by measure, by category. Um, you can see the gaps that exist. You can have those show up on a huddle sheet integrated into your EHR, which is a great feature. And finally, use our registry and attest directly through this dashboard that you're going to see. Um, so I've listed some here, but really the, the takeaway is that what you're going to be viewing, any program you want to track, you are going to be able to put on this dashboard. So in this case, uh, this group is tracking HEDIS measures, ECQMs, and HCC gaps for HCC coding. They also might have MIPS. They could have UDS reporting. Uh, they could have uh, patient-centered medical home requirements. So you could have tabs across the entire screen if you wanted to based on your practices programs. We have a few groups that use this for grant funding. Um, so the measures that we've built in below were specific to this group. You can see the measure description expressed as a percentage, and then obviously your numerator and denominator. So the breast cancer screening is the one we're going to look at today. So if you click, and this is just in a, a slide, but if you were to click in our application, so uh, you clicked on breast cancer screening, the next screen you're going to see would be a breakdown of your patients, your providers. It's going to default to everything that is a failed measure. If I go to the top right corner, I'm able to parse that even further. And this is what we want to look at today, is where does my health plan result not match my EHR results? And by filtering that way, it's going to show me for these providers and these patients, here are the breast cancer screening measures that have passed in my EHR. It's like one has failed. Unfortunately, the health plan, which is really the, the, the source of truth here, it has failed for some reason. So as far as we're concerned from our EHR, we're good. Unfortunately, your EHR is not the decision maker, the plan is. So if you wanted to open up uh, you know, and, and look at one of these specifically, you would be able to click on a patient. So I clicked on patient Christina Hyde. So for her, it looks like we're, she is falling under two of our quality programs, HEDIS and ECQM. I can see here that her breast cancer screening with a pass in our EHR and a fail at the plan level. So if I wanted to open that up, I'm able to look and see what value the plan was expecting and did not receive. I can see here that it was a G0202 code. So if the EHR says, yep, you've done it, you're good to go, move on. Unfortunately, that isn't the case. The plan did not receive it for one reason or another. We will allow you to click the submit button, and really it's a submit or resubmit, if you will, and it will resubmit this code as a claim back to that payer. So it does integrate back into your system um, and will then drop off once the plan received it. So it's saving a tremendous amount of time for our clients because they don't have to manually go through and audit each of these on one-to-one. -one. They're able to see by, by payer, by provider, or just overall for the practice, what measures are not being accepted 
by the plan? What measures have I not met according to the plan? Okay. So that was an overview of, of our, our coding module. Now, of course, there are a lot more pieces to it, and I would be more than happy to give anyone a one-on-one -on -one demo and show you the entire application, but for the sake of time, I want to make sure that, that we keep moving and everyone understands, you know, at a high level what the functionality is and how it's able to align those gaps between your EHR and your health plan. The second piece I want to show you today is the predictive coding module, and just like it sounds, uh, it will show you the codes um, that you need to be, uh, either you've missed or you've undercoded. Um, let, me, let me show you exactly what this looks like. So I've opened up our coding module. Again, it's within our same platform. And I can see that for my coders here, I'm going to have a list of my patients. And un, uh, next to all of these patients, I've got all of the suggestions for codes that have been missed. I've also got the RAF score and the potential adjustment so that you can see the potential upside based on any of the, the coding suggestions. Um, along with the suggestions, which I'll open in a moment, you can see the dates of the last appointments. So if I want to look at a particular patient, and again, this, is, this can be broken down by provider, um, by plan, by patient, by user. If you want to say user A has these providers, user B has these providers, it can all be divvied up that way. I'm going to take a look at this patient, Catherine. So when I click on Catherine, I've now got 21 suggestions. And it's going to show me a listing below of all of the different codes that we need to look at for her. I'm gonna to go to the clinical side, so I'm able to see the source of where this came from, what its current status is, and what code is being recommended. Um, so it looks like she has got more, so let's, uh, let's see if I can pull open a few more for her and review. Okay, so if I review more of her codes, uh, I can see here are the codes we're going to look at, a description, the source. You can see some are from claims, some are from EHR, a document like an X-ray, and what the rule associated with this is. So we're not just telling you here's the code you need to use or that you missed. We're giving you a description, and we're giving you the reason why. Um, if it does align with an HCC code uh, or an HCC Four, we will have that listed for you as well. Now, what's nice is that we will show you what the, um, what the highest, I don't want to say recommended, but the highest HCC score for that patient could also be. So it's extremely valuable. The, the potential adjustment value, I mean, when you properly code your sicker patient, it's going to capture their current health status and their diagnosis codes. Um, and allow you to more accurately code for that patient. Um, so the back-end rules engine that we have in place is scouring all different types of information from the black slide that I showed you earlier. It's pulling data from any source that you have. So from your EHR, your HIE, your practice management system, from labs, medication, um, any type of information that we can have access to, we are going to run through our rules engine. So it continually grows as time goes on. Um, so this tool is allowing folks to say, ah, you know, we're not, we're not, we're possibly not using proper codes or we're possibly, you know, under coding or we may have missed this, allowing you to see, okay, here was a drop off. This code has dropped. I need to make sure it gets recoded before the end of the year. So this predictive coding tool available now as well. I'm going to, I'm going to jump back in to um, presentation here.
Okay. All right, so from where we left off here, the, the best practices that um, you know, we give our clients as it relates to making sure you're, you're handling your quality and your gaps properly um, is first the documentation piece. So a huge mistake groups make is they're not focusing on both aspects, the current and retroactive occurrences. You have to have both of those in place, keeping track of all of the pieces of information that are coming in and, and giving you the option to easily identify what pieces are important, what is relevant, what is lacking, but at least having that central repository where it's documented in one location in our quality manager makes that possible for you to have a fair timeline. Uh, the second is the timing. So to track and identify patients that are missing information or a need for treatment at the point of care. And that's really what this is about, is all of the data that you have seen, all of the images I've showed you that are in our quality and our coding manager, those are available at the point of care where this has to be done. Um, and really, on the timing side, for those of you that are in, say, a, a MIPS program um, or with meaningful use, uh, you probably recall that, you know, you want to take care of this before the last month of the year. It's difficult to get all of your patients in at the end of the year. Then you're playing catch up, and if you can't get them in in time, you've lost something in your numerator. Um, so what needs to be addressed versus waiting for a return visit? If it's not, if that data isn't captured either through the codes or, or through other methods at the point of care, it doesn't count. Just because something is showing in your EHR, remember, doesn't mean it counts on your bottom line with your health plan. The third piece is, is being proactive, and, and you need a way to target your members year-round. Uh, again, don't wait till December to realize that you've got some gaps that need to be corrected. That rarely works. Uh, there is limited schedules that will always cause a conflict. So please have a way to proactively reach out to these folks. We hope that this tool um, that our clients are already using has been proactive with it. We hope this is something that, that you would consider as well as a way for you to be proactive. And finally, the engagement piece. Um, and this is really you know, both on the, on the provider level and on the patient level is, is making sure they understand the measures and understand the requirements. How are they improving as well as, you know, the patient level? How are they reaching out on education and on follow-up? Obviously, another important piece that affects most of the measures that you'll see. Um, as I mentioned before, it's fine to have all these tools. I, you know, there's, there's a myriad of systems out there that claim to do this type of thing. The difference is you need to be able to have access at the point of care. Uh, oftentimes, we hear from groups that they have a pop health solution, either from, you know, an EHR uh, or from a third party. The, the challenge that we hear is that they are using something that the EHR thought would, would fit everyone, and that's just not the case. Um, so groups are being forced to completely change their workflows to do retrainings for their providers, um, typically not, not the best thing to do um, because it just leads to more frustration, changing your workflow to fit into their box as opposed to using a solution or using a partner um, that has a, a system that can be worked around your workflow. Big difference there. And finally, um, some of the positive outcomes that we've seen, some of these are financial, uh, some of these are directly related to patient health. Um, you know, regardless of, of either of those, the drain on physicians um, is, is, will affect both of those areas. And it is our desire and our goal that, that tools like this will allow physicians you know, maybe to spend a little bit less time documenting, a little less time worrying, and have their staff handle some of these issues that now can be solved in a click versus manual research or any type of, type of redundancy. Um, so that is all that I have prepared for today. Um, please jot down my email address 
and you can always reach out to me. I'll typically reach out to you, you know, within a few hours. Um, and our website is listed there below as well, where you'll be able to find this recording in a few days. Um, I want to take a little bit of time, and if anyone has questions, again, if you could just find the bottom right part of the WebEx where it's going to say chat and find my name, uh, you'll, be able to, uh, you'll be able to send me a chat message. Um, so I'm going to wait just a few minutes here, and if anyone does have any questions for me, um, you know, I'm sure everyone would love to hear. Please, uh, please go ahead and shoot them my way. We'll, we'll hold here for you know, two or three minutes if anyone has questions. Oh, okay. Got one from Ashley. So Ashley types, how does this work with the MIPS program? Okay. So the question is, how does this work with the MIPS program? So MIPS, um, the MIPS program, we are currently in the second year. Uh, Care Optimize has a dashboard, and it is one of those tabs that I showed you uh, at the beginning of the, the, the presentation, towards the beginning of the presentation. We can track your quality measures um, for uh, all four of your categories, so your improvement activities, your ACI, your quality measures, and for cost. On that dashboard, it will show you in real time how each of your physicians is scoring and how they're scoring in each measure. Opening each measure there will show which patients have a gap. So you forgot to do this particular measure on this patient, it will tell you exactly which patient it is and when they're scheduled to come in next and when their last appointment was. Um, so you're able to take care of that, that gap, get, it, um, get, get that patient back in the numerator to get a higher score. At the end of the reporting year, um, you will submit directly through our registry. We have our own registry, connects directly to CMS. Um, this is our second year doing this. Um, we had most of our, our clients score in the high 90s or 100% last year. Um, and again, our consulting team works hand in hand and, and walks you through the entire process as well as having uh, regularly scheduled calls with you for the MIPS program. Good question, Ashley. Any other questions? Again, uh, just use the chat box um, to message me. My name is Jonathan, if you want to find me on the drop-down list. All right, Kevin says, what EHRs do you work with? Okay, so uh, the question from Kevin reads, what EHRs do you work with? Uh, so uh, most of the, the major EHRs, um, you know, NextGen, Cerner, um, Centricity, Allscript, Epic, uh, eClinical Works, Greenway, I'm sure I'm, I'm, sure I'm leaving some off. Um, but as long as we can have access to the back end, um, we can pull the data we need. Um, in many cases, this can be integrated if you want it integrated into your system. Some of our clients prefer for it to be a, a standalone web application that doesn't integrate in, um, but still pulls the data back and forth. And that's completely fine, too. It's, it's based on whatever workflow is best for your practice. Good question. Anyone else? Okay. Well, if anyone does have questions after the webinar, please reach out to me. Um, I, I appreciate everyone joining, um, and have a wonderful rest of your week, and we'll see you in two or three weeks for our next insights. Take care.